I'm a hustler, baby. It's time for Hustle Her Podcast. I'm your host, Deshae Keynes. Hustle Her is all about inspiring women through real life experiences that have helped to mold and develop not only me, but my guest into the entrepreneurs and leaders we are today. If you're an enterprising woman determined to succeed and looking for a bit of motivation, a bit of tough love, and some actionable takeaways to be the best you, girl, you are in the right place. Hey guys, and welcome back to Hustle Her Podcast. Thanks again, as always, for spending some time with me here today. A um, few housekeeping things. First thing is make sure to subscribe, subscribe, subscribe to the channel. Um, definitely want you guys to stay abreast of everything that we have going on, new episodes, um, when we have shorts and reels, all that great stuff. So make sure you subscribe to the channel. The next thing is we want to thank our season sponsors, Brown and & Company and 59 Front. Brown & Company are responsible for all of some of the set design that you see here today some of the accessories that we have in there that they have in their home decor section can be found at brown and co located on front street here in bermuda um i'm really excited guys about my guest today she's a little bit different than some of the guests that we've seen before and not because of anything still a woman all those types of things but she is on the cusp of her career she's a young uh bermudian who is currently at the university of hong kong and it is mackenzie cole talk the mackenzie cole talk <laughs> How are you? I'm good. How are you? Good. Um, thank you so much for joining me today. I'm super thank excited. Thank you for having um, me. Yeah, absolutely. I think it's really important that we kind of showcase women in Bermuda at all ages, all ranges, wherever we are. And I'm really, I'm excited to see what the future how is, is in store for you. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah no, all right. Exciting. So let's start out with some rapid fire questions, get to know you a little bit better, and then we'll go into some more stuff. Cool. Mm-hmm. All right. So what is your favorite? favorite animal my favorite animal do you know what mm-hmm. I'm a sucker for wiener dogs I love oh, wiener. wiener dogs I think they're so cute <laughs> I think I can't just say dogs period mm-hmm. it's like wiener dogs in yeah. particular mm-hmm. I think they're so adorable yeah okay wiener dogs are super cute yeah. I, I do agree it uh, depends on the angle though so you gotta go yeah, from yeah. there <laughs> <laughs> all right what's your favorite color pink okay and who do you whatsapp the most my mom really <laughs> I, I whatsapp her like when I wake up when I'm eating for breakfast <laughs> when I'm walking to when I'm walking to school I, I talk to her all day every day <laughs> okay who's your celebrity crush Michael B. Jordan okay <laughs> We get that. We get that. That's yeah. an easy one. It, it, yeah, yeah, for sure. fine. So we're glad Lori Harvey's easy. out of the picture. 100% glad. <laughs> yes. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Lori. Check you later. <laughs> yeah. No, Lori McKenzie is here. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> All right. <laughs> All right. Who, um, what song do you have on repeat right now? Cozy by Beyonce. Okay. Yes. Yeah. I went to the... Um, just so about I, to yeah. act. <laughs> so I went to her concert in Paris right before I came back home mm-hmm. after university. It was like my post-exam like mm-hmm. celebration. And it was iconic. Really? It was iconic. Yeah. 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 And her Paris show was like her first one, right? Yeah. Oh, my goodness. No, no, no. No, no, it wasn't her first one. Um, But it was her first time back in Paris since her last tour. Okay. So it was exciting. Yeah. Very. Oh, my gosh. It was a big stadium. So big. Yeah. The Stade de France. It was incredible. Amazing. (laughs) I really should have gotten tickets to go, but I didn't. And I'm upset about it. Um, Okay. What is your favorite thing to do on a Sunday? Go for a drive. I actually, so I live in St. David's. Mm-hmm. I love going for a drive to Dockyard for some reason. Really? I'm, it's just something about, I, I try to justify it and say that it's because of Woody's shrimp. Um, <laughs> but it's really just because I, I, I love to just you go just for like a drive and drive. relax. Yeah, exactly. Especially mm-hmm. when my mom's driving. Mm-hmm. Now that I have my license, it's like not so much because it's like, well, who's driving today? Mm-hmm. But when she's driving, yeah. It's better. <laughs> that, I know. That's my Sunday plan. I hate driving. I'm yeah. so over it. Um, <laughs> any chance I have not to drive, I'm going to take advantage exactly. of it. Absolutely. <laughs> All right. Larry, your last vacation. My last vacation was Paris. Paris yeah. to go see Beyonce. So yeah, there you that, go. That was I my get last. that. <laughs> <laughs> okay, and then if you were a celebrity and you were backstage, and you know how they have the writers, and you have what's going to be on it, right? Like mm-hmm. what they, what your request is backstage, what you have to have in your green room, what mm-hmm. would be on your list? Earl Grey tea. Earl Grey tea, Mackenzie, Earl Grey out of tea. all the things. Out of Earl all the things. Tea. Do you know what? So before every speech that mm-hmm. I have to give, mm-hmm. that's just like my staple because mm-hmm. it's like I need something comforting. I need something that's going to keep me a bit grounded, keep me mm-hmm. a bit calm. Um, and it's just something about it. And also like a, like in a cute mug, of course. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> that's so that's necessary. Yeah, exactly. But I feel, I feel like that's probably what I'd go for mm-hmm. other than, you know, something else like. 
a good setup, good lighting. There those are go. like those are the non negotiables, mm-hmm. but those are like what's expected. Yeah. But in terms of what I have to have in the room, are all great team. All great team. Okay. And what's your favorite reality TV show? Do you know it's been so long since I've actually really? been able to just sit down and watch? Yeah. I haven't. I haven't. I haven't watched Netflix since pre-exam season. Oh, and that yeah. was that started in March. Okay. <laughs> so, so it's I been a while. Even, it's been a while. Gotta get back into yeah. the swing. I'll, of have, I'll have to come back to you with that. There you go. <laughs> well, we'll regroup next exactly. year. Exactly. All right. <laughs> and then finally, it's cut match time here in Bermuda. Who is your cut match team? Somerset. The great. The great. All right. Interview <laughs> can continue. <laughs> All right. There we go. All right, Mackenzie. So, Mackenzie, you're known for so many different things, right? And um, we won't say what your age is. Um, at a very young age, you know, a lot of people in Bermuda know you, but I think most recently, most people in Bermuda know you for the speech that you gave in the House of Commons. Walk me through how that happened. Yeah. So I was a member of Bermuda's Youth Parliament mm. um, from 2017. In 2018, I was elected as Youth Premier. Mm. Um, which I served for a few years, Mm -hmm. Um, and I loved it. It was an incredible experience, you know, in enhancing my civic engagement locally and then understanding how Bermuda's parliament works. Um, And then last year, so just I I think probably October time, um, the Bermuda government London office reached out and said that I'd been nominated by the Speaker of the House in Bermuda um, to represent the island at the National Youth Parliament Day that they have annually, um, in the UK. So it's the youth parliament in the UK that has this annual event where they all mm. get to sit in the House of Commons and have their debates on the issues that the young people in the UK are most passionate about. And so for the first time ever, British overseas territories were invited by the Speaker of the House in the UK to speak to issues that are most pressing mm-hmm. for young people in their respective territories. Um, and so, yeah, so I got to represent Bermuda, mm. which was, it was an incredible experience. I mean, the day was just... <sighs> Out of this world. I, mm-hmm. I mean, I told, I mentioned, you know, the person I would tap the most was my yeah. mom. And mm-hmm. so as soon as I got the call that I'd been nominated, I was like, okay, I need you to come up. Like, mm-hmm. I, I need you to be there with exactly. me, you know, et cetera. So, so she got to come up with me, which was incredible. Um, but yeah, from speech prep to all of the practicing, um, to the actual day, it was just, it was an incredible experience. That's and then really obviously cool. meeting everyone, seeing the issues that were being debated as well, which was really interesting. Mm-hmm. And then also the meeting the other overseas territory representatives who all spoke to similar issues mm-hmm. that their respective territories were facing. Mm-hmm. Um, so yeah, so it was, it was an incredible opportunity. That's really cool. I mean, not very many people can say that, you know, that they've done that. Your first Bermuda, I mean, yes, overseas territories was the first time they were invited and that was you that was mm-hmm. able to do that. Mm-hmm. And I remember seeing it online. I think it was Burn News and I was like, oh my God, <laughs> And I didn't even know you, right? And it was just like, it was so cool. It was like, I felt like all of us were like super proud. Like as a Bermudian, it was just a really proud thing to see. Yeah, no, it it was great as well. Because, you know, when you get this question of, can you speak to the issues that Mm -hmm. young people are are most concerned about or the issues that are most pressing facing Bermuda's young Mm -hmm. people? And it's like, well, you sit there and it's like, okay, well, I, I, I know what my perspective might be, mm. but am I going to then speak to for the entire population yeah, of young people? which is a heavy ask. Yeah. You know? um, but, but then, you, you know, you speak to different people mm-hmm. and you, you look at the issues that might connect to other issues. Mm. Um, and I think that that was why. So my speech focused on the importance of returning home to the island mm. post-secondary education and the issue of the lack of opportunity mm. um, and how that, that then leads to people feeling like they must move overseas um, and so, you know, l- you're looking at a bunch of different issues that kind of you, you can speak to in a certain way. Um, so, yeah, so it was it was it was a great opportunity to kind of also reflect um, on that, especially yeah. being overseas in university at that time. I'm kind of in that in that yeah. area. Absolutely. I mean, I remember coming back from university and not knowing. Well, it was a bit of a recession in 2012. Mm-hmm. Um, so it was just like, what are you going to do? You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Were there jobs available? You know, we were competing with people who have all these years of experience for entry level positions because they just wanted to work. Yeah. Right. Mm-hmm. So a lot of the people, if I look back now to your point about coming back to Bermuda, a lot of the people in my high school class did not come back home after university. A lot of them stayed in the U.S. or in the U.K. and Canada. Mm-hmm. Like a lot of people did not come back. Um, so it is something that's been going on for a really long time. And then we also have like this fake well, not fake, but when I say mass exodus of people leaving the island currently mm-hmm. as well, looking mm-hmm. for better opportunities. So it is something not just affecting young Bermudians, exactly. but I feel like all of us, all right? Bermudians. Exactly. Yeah. exactly. And I think that um, when when you speak to it being people post-secondary education, mm-hmm. um, you know, once you go out for university and then you, you look at the importance of international experience, because I'm also a big supporter of that, that international experience is important because those are the same skills that you're going to one day bring back home. Absolutely. Um, And so it's just a matter of navigating how you, you know, 
gain the international experience Mm -hmm. whilst also making sure that at one point you know how you can fit that back into the local community that's a really important reflection point for me absolutely I think it's really good so how I'm former uh, youth parliamentarian as well by the way (laughs) so I love love the youth parliament like I don't think I would have ever known about our parliamentary system if it wasn't for that right I don't think a lot of people miss Mm -hmm. that part of it Mm -hmm. so what what drew you to go to youth parliament so in 2017 I assisted I I volunteered Mm -hmm. um, in the election that was happening. So just like behind the scenes, calling people saying, hey, you haven't voted yet, Mm -hmm. Um, you know. And there was something about hearing those like, conversations in the backgrounds um you know the people that work with the different teams and different Mm -hmm. constituencies and it was something about it that just kind of I was drawn to it and I started engaging in one of the conversations um and someone had mentioned they were like you should join youth parliament and I was like what's youth parliament Mm -hmm. and then you know I I followed up and I was like can you send me the email for who I need to reach out to and I think I was there like two weeks later um and and I'm so glad I went because it it became that every Wednesday mm-hmm. like push where it's like oh my gosh like I'm happy you know like to to be here to be able to engage with like-minded young people mm-hmm. um to be debating different issues you know you're doing impromptu debates sometimes you're doing you know prepared debates um and and you really feel this opportunity to engage with people that also want to you know discuss those sorts of issues mm-hmm. and then also you have the opportunity to engage with people who will you know solve those sorts of issues yeah. or have the opportunity to solve those sorts of yeah. issues so yeah it's, it's, it's a great opportunity yeah. I think absolutely so where did you go to high school work academy ah, yes okay. I, was from, I was at work academy from year one to year 13 Re- okay so a lifer <laughs> so, sure. uh, well, yeah, so a lifer. <laughs> there you go okay and what um so you're currently at the University of Hong Kong but you're just doing a filler not a filler year what is it called a um oh my goodness Exchange program. Exchange, yeah. yes. The exchange yeah. program. Yeah, yeah. so, so we'll do that. Yeah, so I am a law student at the University of Bristol. I just completed my second year at mm-hmm. Bristol, um, which I love. Mm-hmm. I love the University of Bristol. I've, I've wanted to be there for so many years. Really? So, yeah, it was, it was nice. my dream university. It was my top choice. So I was mm-hmm. really happy to, you know, be accepted. Um, and right now, so in, in 10 days, actually, mm-hmm. I'll be leaving the island to a, a, to embark on a exchange program nice. at the University of Hong Kong. Wow. Um, which has also been one of my like long-term one of my long-term goals Mm -hmm. um so you know I'm excited to kind of take on that opportunity Mm -hmm. take on the experience um really kind of see where it leads me Mm. um so yeah so I'm really excited for that why the University of Hong Kong so Hong Kong I think is such an incredible place an incredible opportunity for people who are interested in a career in the law Mm. um there are a lot of firms that have offices there I'm a 2021 Walker scholarship recipient and Mm -hmm. so you know, they, they have, have an office, office yeah. in, in Hong Kong. And so it's a great opportunity for, you know, if someone's looking for secondment in some mm-hmm. point, um, you know, like looking at the long term sorts of plans there. But equally, I think that I wanted something that was totally different. Mm-hmm. Um, I wanted to be able to branch outside of just the like, you know, European universities. Mm-hmm. And so when I saw the opportunities for Hong Kong, Japan, Singapore, it was kind of like looking at all of those. I spoke to a lot of different people asking for their advice. And Hong Kong just was a consistent yes Mm -hmm. um in addition to keeping up with all of my law courses and my law modules at the university of hong kong i'll also be doing international relations from the east asian perspective because i thought it was important for me to be able to study something that i can't study anywhere else Mm -hmm. um and so i thought that that was like a really interesting module to take up so yeah so i'll be doing that as well that sounds like a lot (laughs) like a lot a lot like (laughs) intense i'm not gonna lie like (laughs) most people like yeah i do my four years you know party do what i gotta do but Mm -hmm. you got like really really focused and you have a plan of what it is that you what you want to do like how did you develop this plan of where you kind of saw yourself right now yeah so I've I've always been a planner Mm. um I've always kind of had to have structure and okay this is what I'm doing at this time this is what Mm -hmm. I'm doing at this time my mom always tells me she's like when you were younger you were just like this you know it's like well what can I do now and you Mm -hmm. you know so I've always been this person I think when I was younger I think about like about 14 15 I kind of started saying okay like there's a lot of different things that that have to happen over the course of this period mm-hmm. for me to kind of move on to this next point and this next point, et cetera, et cetera. And I think it really started my grandfather. Um, he, he said to me one day, he was like, you can be a nurse, a doctor or a lawyer pick one and get back to me and I was like okay well you know that everyone everyone in the family's a nurse mm-hmm. um you know the doctor thing isn't working and then I said well outside of these three choices I cannot do math so let, let's look at the law thing mm-hmm. you know public speaking and debate were already kind of coming up to be my thing at that point and my passions um and so it was kind of like okay 
let's look into this. And then when I started researching on what sorts of things should a law student be prepared for when, like before they get to university, that Mm -hmm. was when I started developing, okay, like this long-term plan of where do you want to go for university? Mm -hmm. Okay. I said the university of Bristol. Once I start looking at the university of Bristol, then it's like, well, what opportunities can I take on when I actually get there? And so there were like the summer abroad opportunities. So last year I actually spent the summer working in Vietnam, Mm -hmm. which was a partnership um, between the University of Bristol and an employment like opportunity um, that they have. So like that was like one opportunity and then it was studying abroad, mm-hmm. um, which, you know, I had looked at for so long. I think I looked in my notes the other day and I saw like every university, every partner university that the University of Bristol had um, in 2018. Wow. <laughs> and That's for crazy. me to now, you know, be getting yeah. in, in 10 days. Um, so, so I think I've just always been a planner and I recognize um my need for structure Mm. and I think that now it's more so I'm striking more of a balance between having a plan but also remaining flexible Mm -hmm. um so you know understanding that everything happens for a reason Mm. um and just to follow the journey as it goes Mm -hmm. um but also just appreciate that I do have the level of structure that I desire and I you know that comes strictly from me so which is good right because sometimes you know especially like with university students or high school students sometimes that structure comes from your parents right so the fact that you want to have that structure I think you'll stick to it more because it's something that you want to do exactly and Mm -hmm. then even when I do have those moments where it's like you know it gets really hard or you know law school is no easy feat Mm -hmm. and then you've got you know speeches that you have to memorize Mm -hmm. um it's obviously then really really good because I have such a supportive village and especially my mom I mean like that I that's why I speak to her the most and I speak to her so often is because it's like okay I just need one like one little pick me up like can you Mm -hmm. please just like tell me that you know that everything will be okay Mm -hmm. um so so it's really good to kind of have that drive myself as well but also be able to have you know the support system to like keep keep that going and keep that up absolutely yeah. tell me about young Mackenzie so before you know your grandpa told you you had three options <laughs> what did young Mackenzie <laughs> want to do young Mackenzie uh, young Mackenzie I think young I think I've always actually been a debater it mm. was just a matter of like it wasn't structured at that point exactly <laughs> so it was like like you know PE classes and t- giving a speech as to why I shouldn't have to run because like you know <laughs> just like, didn't want to <laughs> just didn't want to <laughs> Um, exactly. So, so I think, I think that young Mackenzie was probably someone who, who was easily inspired. Mm. Um, you know, I, I looked up to so many people in in such little but significant ways. Mm-hmm. I think, you know, seeing my mom and her how supportive she was as a single parent, I think has has stuck with me in mm. terms of like making sure that she always remembers how grateful I am for her support. Yeah. Um, and and the opportunities that I've been allowed because of her. And so I think that. I, I was I was very much um, empowered as a young as a young girl, um, which which was incredible in terms of my upbringing and, and making sure that you know I always understood that the opportunities were endless, mm-hmm. um, but also making sure that I didn't do anything that I wasn't one hundred percent passionate about. Mm-hmm. I think that's probably my biggest takeaway from my childhood is that my mom was always encouraging me, you know, b- between the dance, piano, flute, you know, everything that mm-hmm. I was that I was engaging in. Um, making sure that at any moment, if I showed that I did not want to be there on that day, is it that you don't want to be there on that day? Is it, you know, is it, is it just the day thing or is it actually that you don't want to do this anymore? Mm-hmm. And if you don't want to do this anymore, then we'll stop. Um, because it's always about giving 110% to everything that you do and making sure that you're passionate about everything that you do. And so that, I think that that was like my biggest takeaway from little Mackenzie. Yeah. Yeah. That's really cool because I think a lot of times I love that your mom did that because a lot of times kids are forced to do things just because we parents think that that's what they should be doing Mm -hmm. or you just Mm -hmm. don't want idle time. But Mm -hmm. I think you, you excel better at things that you want to do. do. Right. And and don't get me wrong. Kids are fickle. Right. So you Mm -hmm. just can't. Because if that was the case, they just eat candy right, all day. Right. <laughs> so I get you do need that type of structure. But being able to notice the difference between I just don't feel like doing this today, mm-hmm. like you said, and I just don't want to do this anymore. I think that's pretty key. Exactly. Right. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. And so you mentioned your mom um, a few times so far. So as you said, it's just you and your mom, single mom mm-hmm. raising you or whatever. So how much do you value that relationship? It's it's the relationship I value the most. Mm. Um, we are very, very similar in terms of our personalities, you know, when we, if, if she thinks it, I say mm-hmm. it, if I think it, she says mm-hmm. it. Um, so, so we're very, very close. Um, and it's just, there's something about a mother daughter relationship that I think for me personally, mm-hmm. I have benefited the most from my mother's support because of how close we are. And because I feel, um, you know, the, the underlying gratitude always mm-hmm. in understanding that, 
there are a lot of cases where people will assume that people who come from a single parent family or single parent household will not be afforded certain opportunities. Mm, and that's very, that, 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 you know, it's, it's, that, it, that occurs, that mm-hmm. happens. Yeah. Um, I'm just so grateful that my mom has the drive and, and the, um, sort of dedication to making sure that my journey is not interrupted by absolutely anything Mm. and she supports it in whatever way necessary um and we talk you know we're we're very open with each other um which is also incredible because then it's like you know I get to when I do my own personal reflection I then come to her and I say okay well you know you know me better than anyone else Mm. so let's talk about this and so I I think that our relationship is is definitely the relationship I value the most in my life Mm. for sure that's amazing and you you mentioned about like you know sometimes children who come from single parent families sometimes can be a little, they're not afforded the same opportunities. Mm-hmm. Right. And I think you've been, a, you, you, to your point, you said you have been afforded these opportunities mm-hmm. and your mom didn't, you know, did you, do you feel like she sacrificed anything for you? Yes. Mm-hmm. Yes. A continuous sacrifice. I mean, you know, making sure that, you know, I was able to stay at work Academy and then be able to do all of the opportunities and things that I did while I was there, you know, all the public speaking trips mm-hmm. and competitions and, you know, I, there was never a time where my mother um, a, even allowed me to question whether I was able to do something. It was mm-hmm. always like, if you want to do this, this is what we're going to do. You're just going to make sure that you give it 110%. Mm-hmm. And I think that that's why that lesson has stuck with me for so long. And that's been my, you know, my sort of, I, I guess, what what keeps me going in, in terms of making sure that I'm passionate about everything that I do is because I understand the sacrifices that she's made my entire Absolutely. life to make sure that I can get to where I am mm-hmm. and then where I, you know, I can get to where I want to be. And so I think that when I think about the structure that I want and I think about, you know, like, okay, this has to happen for this to happen. Um, it, I keep, I, I stick to that plan because I understand that that end goal is not just for me. It's also for her. So when oh. I say, you know, when she came up for the house of Commons speech, as much as, you know, she definitely wanted to be there su- to support, it was also that I wanted to, her to recognize that as much as this is my moment, this is also her moment, mm. as much as it was the island's moment, you mm-hmm. know? And so um, it was definitely, it was definitely like a testament to the fact that she's she's always been by my side and she always will be by my side. Mm. Um, so, so yeah. Sorry, yeah. that's made me cry. <laughs> Over here just well enough. <laughs> Oof, that was good. No, that's amazing. I think that appreciation for your mom, right, is unmatched. Mm-hmm. You know, knowing, I think that's probably the greatest gift that you can give her is knowing how much that you appreciate her. Exactly. Um, and being amazing because you are already, right? So I think that is, that's a given at this point. But mm-hmm. knowing the sacrifice, understanding the sacrifice and being appreciative of it yeah. is, is key. And it, that's unmatched when it comes to feeling like you deserve something or it has to happen just because of who you are or whatever that may or may not be. Mm -hmm. Um, so that, that humbleness and being grateful to your mother is an amazing thing. Mm -hmm. And, um, go mom. That was amazing. (laughs) (laughs) All right. So when you think of like what Mackenzie wants to do and you want to be a lawyer, like, Mm -hmm. so what's next in the plan? Yeah. So, so obviously I'll have my year abroad this year. Mm -hmm. I'll then have to go back to Bristol to finish my degree. So my law degree will be finished after that, 2025. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Um, No more sunrises in the library. (laughs) Um, And then after that, I'll do my training course overseas as well. Um, So that will be my one year LPC. Mm -hmm. And then after that, I'll come back and I'll do my pupillage and then I'll get called to the Bermuda bar, Mm -hmm. um, which feels like it's forever away, but equally like the past two years of university have gone so so quickly. Um, So, you know, I, I know that it will come quickly. Mm-hmm. Um, and then, yeah, so I, I definitely plan for a career in the law. Um, but I also plan, I also have political aspirations. Mm-hmm. Um, and so I, I, I guess my main thing is to make sure that I make an impact mm-hmm. in not only the legal um, arena, but also in the political arena and making sure that I'm giving back to the community that, you know, that made, that made me really. Absolutely. Yeah. No, it's, it's, we were talking about it pre-show as well. And, you know, not very many people, especially young people right now have aspirations to be going to politics. Mm-hmm. Like what kind of is the driving force for that? I think it was my time in youth parliament, really. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, being able to, to just see the procedure, but also to interact with so many ministers, MPs, yeah. um, you know, doing, um, doing different events and, and even, you know, budget debates, just yeah. even watching them. Um, when you're so interested in certain topics and you're then passionate about debate, the the two of those together kind of just makes for this Mm -hmm. continuous point of reflection. And every time you see something, it's like, wow, you know, what, what would I say in this situation or what would I do? Um, and then, you know, when you have just even side conversations with MPs and it's like, okay, I can, I can see what, what made you get into 
you know, politics. And then you start reflecting on, you know, what is, what is making me want to get into politics? And I just really think it was that experience for so long, like just being, you know, in youth parliament every Wednesday, um, being in the house as well, which mm -hmm. is like a, you know, a fantastic opportunity yeah. because not all youth parliamentarians around the world get to do that. And so I think that that was like definitely what, what really got me interested mm -hmm. in, in, or got, or I guess sparked mm. my political aspirations. Yeah, definitely. It's so crazy that you just said that about other youth parliamentarians, because mm -hmm. we did during that time too, we went overseas for I think Commonwealth Day, mm -hmm. and we were the youngest people there yeah. because our youth parliament is high school students. Exactly. We're most youth parliaments around Go up the world. Like Twenty five, exactly, yeah, exactly. So it was, which is good and bad, right? Mm -hmm. But I think one of the goods of that is that you actually get that knowledge at a high school level, yeah. right? And you kind of know what you want to do exactly. post that. Exactly. Where it's I guess the downside to that is. Um, having a bit more of the information during the debating times, yeah. which is really good. Exactly. But that's a, also a good thing about Bermuda too, because we get access to people that other places just don't, exactly. you know what I mean? Exactly. And that's something that's, you can't, you can't match that anywhere no. else. No. So I totally agree with you there, but something else we were talking about pre-show was about the lands, the political landscape mm -hmm. and what it currently looks like and what it may look like by the time you're ready to become a politician. Mm -hmm. Like what are some of the things um, that you would do differently than what is kind of happening now? I think, I think I'd probably piggyback off of, off of what you say about the importance of having or, or the benefits, I should say, of having our young people or us having a younger cohort for, uh, for um, youth parliament. Um, I think that it would definitely be for me a priority to cater to the young people mm -hmm. um, in, in, sen in the sense of, you know, understanding opportunity, mm -hmm. understanding, you know, what it, what it might look like for them to be in certain spaces. Mm -hmm. Um, because you, you, ha you obviously need to be able to see different spaces for you to visualize yourself in certain spaces. Mm -hmm. Um, so I think that, you know, I won't say that it's something that I do differently. I just say that that's probably a priority of mine in the future. Mm -hmm. Um, and I think, and not to say that it isn't a priority now, it's more so just that as a young person, um, and also as a young person who was involved in youth parliament and involved in different opportunities and experiences outside of youth parliament as well. Um, I think that I really did benefit mm -hmm. from seeing what part, how parliament works yeah. um, from such a young age. So I think that that would definitely be a priority for me yeah. um, in, in kind of shaping what sort of political landscape, not only I would want to be a part of, but one that I would want to see after I then mm. leave whatever political aspirations, yeah. you know, with Which the people key. after me. Exactly, exactly. Yeah. Fostering those sorts of ideas um, for younger generations and empowering them to think about those things um, at a young age, I think yeah. is really good. So I think uh, we've covered so many things that you've already done. Mm -hmm. And with that comes a level of expectation from outside people. I know I joked earlier and said, you know, Bermuda's future premier. <laughs> um, do you feel that type of pressure outside or does that affect you in any way? I definitely, yeah, I, I, I definitely think that there, there is expectation. Um, but I, I view it in the best way possible. Mm -hmm. um, I view it as support. Mm -hmm. um, and I'm so appreciative for that support. Because, you know, when you then get up in the House of Commons and you're about to speak on an issue that's, you know, that, mm -hmm. that's impacting Bermuda's young people, mm -hmm. um, the expectation that then came from that also assured me that, you know, people did recognize that this is also an issue that they see. Yeah. Um, and so I, it was more assuring for me. Um, but I won't, I, you know, I definitely won't say that the expectation is not there and, um, and that the pressure is there, the pressure is on. Um, as much as it then, you know, keeps me going keep, and keeps mm -hmm. me grounded and making sure that I'm always, you know, sticking to the plan, sticking to, you know, a, a level of structure. I think that um, my personal expectations of myself um, have been enhanced from the outside expectation. Mm. And I think that, you know, we, we are our, our fiercest critics. Yeah. Um, and so when it comes to any speech, it's like, I'll, I'll, go really really deep into it okay well what is this what am I saying what am I doing is that you know is my purpose shown through in this speech is is everything that I'm trying to get across across said in a you know certain way mm -hmm. um so I think that my my personal expectations have been have been heightened yeah um but I think that that's a great thing um I think it's more so than for me to kind of manage that yeah um however is fit you know however I see fit um but I, I think that the support is great um, and, and it's encouraging and it's empowering. Um, and I think that, you know, it, it, it really helps 
as I go through, you know, like my journey and to know that like my village is there. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. No, I, I, I definitely agree with you. I think having the village to support you and, you know, like we said with the House of Commons speech, it was like the whole island was behind you. Your mom was there with you, mm-hmm. obviously. Um, and obviously that does come with a level of pressure. And um, but, you know, I think you, you hit the nail on the head with, you know, remaining focused, I think, number one, and you're a planner, which is good. Yeah. So, you know, sticking to your plan yeah. as well, I think is also really cool, because sometimes with that pressure, we can get swayed mm-hmm. to do other things that we don't necessarily want to do. Yeah. Um, so I'm very, very glad that you have a plan and you're sticking to it, which we've, we know from your mom that you've been doing it since yes, you were little. Exactly. So there you go. So we don't have any doubt exactly. when it comes to that as well. But I guess being a Bermudian, being a woman, mm-hmm. being, you know, a law student, all of that, like, what would you say is the most important thing right now? Remaining passionate, mm-hmm. but remaining flexible. Mm. I think that I have had the period of, you know, having the plan, this is the structure, this is what I want to do Mm -hmm. at this time so that the next thing can get done. And I think that as much as that's been really beneficial in terms of making me the type of student that I am and have been, um, but also the type of individual that I am and have been, it's also about understanding that when when things don't go to plan, that's okay Mm -hmm. and that it's important to pivot. Yeah. Um, And so I think that that's probably like the biggest lesson that I've learned um, in terms of not kind of, you know, achieving something and being like, great, like that's exciting, but what's the next thing on the list? You know, like the, the vision board is great, but it's not a matter of like a tick box, yeah. you know, sort of activity, right? It's, it's, you have to sit there and you know, smell the roses, like appreciate it. And that's another big lesson from my mom is that like, you know, sh- she'll see me and it will be like, okay, like, you know, you know, great achievement. And then she'll be like, do you want to go on sale? And it's like, oh, actually I've got to like start on this next thing. And yeah. so, um, so that's, that's definitely one thing that I think I've, I've kind of taken away from, you know, making sure that I balance the two of those for sure. So with school, obviously, and even in high school and stuff, what were some of the additional things that you used to do as extracurriculars? I know you said you were um, big into speech and debate. Um, What were some of the things that you kind of do outside of school? Yeah, outside of school. Even currently. Yeah. So outside of school, I think that my my big passions are supporting Bermuda's young people. And so that's like, you know, things like we speak Mm -hmm. um, and, and making sure that, um, I'm giving back for in the areas that I know that I can assist in and support. Yeah. Um, and so, you know, public speaking and debate obviously being my passions, then it's like, okay, well, you know, supporting youth parliament, um, supporting, you know, young women and becoming comfortable um, with public speaking at a young age. Um, so I think, and and then also, also through my role as assistant director of the Future Leaders Program. Mm-hmm. Um, and so it's like those sorts of areas. Outside as well, it's really just, I think, pouring into my own cup um, has become really important for me. So taking the time to relax, taking the time to, you know, get, get experience and get, you know, get work experience, but also like valuing friendships, valuing relationships, um, with, you know, with everyone. And so, especially when I come back home as well, you know, taking in the sun, um, so outside of, outside of, you know, Mackenzie, the public speaker and debater, I think it's really just Mackenzie who focuses on, you know, personal development and taking risks and, you know, um, understanding that every opportunity is an opportunity. It's just, you know, you, you'll wait to see Mm -hmm. when it kind of feeds back. So, Mm -hmm. so yeah, I I think that that's kind of like where I'm at right now outside. So I know, I think you touched on a little bit already, but when you think of like learning, right? So you're mm-hmm. learning all the time and with, cause you're still in school and mm-hmm. all those things. But what would you say is the most important thing you've learned to date? The most important Not, it doesn't have to be just school related, right. just period. Outside of the flexibility point and you know about, about remaining flexible. Um, the importance of having a global mindset mm-hmm. is probably one that I've picked up on. Um, both through traveling, but also through, you know, the research for my study abroad program. Yeah. Um, It's just so important, I find, to be able to um, adapt to different personas, different cultures, um, to be able to understand them, um, but also to be able to sort of utilize the lessons learned in different cultures and different places um, once you come back home. Mm. And so there were little things like when I was overseas in Vietnam, um, for example, and different things like work culture. I mean, at, at, at 12 p.m. when the lights go off and I'm looking around, I'm like, okay, well, what, what happened here? And it's like, oh, no, we, like we nap at lunchtime so that everyone feels rested for wow. the afternoon. And you come back and it's like, okay, well, 
are we going to do this now? <laughs> um, so, so, you know, understanding that, and I think that also came from academics, you know, I studied comparative law this year. Um, and so you understand, you know, taking things from different legal systems. So it's also in practice in that, you know, mm. um, and then obviously politically as well. Um, so I think that that's kind of one of the biggest lessons I've learned is the importance of having a global mindset and understanding different cultures and being able to experience different mm. cultures in that. Mm. So you seem really like fearless, right? Like <laughs> um, you just kind of, take you know the bull by the horns the saying and hopefully that's not <laughs> socially inappropriate to say anymore um because things change so frequently <laughs> these days um but when you think of fear right um mm-hmm. what would you say is your greatest fear and how do you manage that fear my greatest fear oh my gosh my greatest fear do you know what i i actually and, and this is going to sound so strange because it's like public speaker and debater Um, But it's something about opportunities when I'm speaking, Mm -hmm. when it's like you've got the expectation and then you've got the expectation of yourself. um, And I'm still very scared every single time. Mm -hmm. And, you know, like the nerves are good, like, you know, constant, Mm -hmm. you know, the constant nerves that that keep you grounded. Yeah. But I'm still very scared every time I get up to speak because it's like, you know, you're expecting a lot of yourself and, you know, you want to make sure that you know, there's no issues, there's no, um, you know, slip ups that you don't, you know, mess up any part that you say everything that you want to say the way you want to say it. Yeah. Um, so I think that that's probably one of, one of my biggest fears for sure. Um, outside of butterflies. <laughs> you don't like I'm, butterflies? I'm, 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 yeah. I'm actually really scared of butterflies. Wow. Yeah. What, what, what about I'm, the butterflies? Honestly, I just don't see, like, like I, I, I love the beauty in the picture of a monarch mm-hmm. butterfly, but the actual, like up close, absolutely. <laughs> absolutely i don't not. think i've I ever will run away met anyone ever oh my gosh it's w- always my fun fact and every like fun like first meeting yeah, where they're yeah, like, yeah. like, the like ice yeah, yeah, yeah. and i'm like i'm yeah my i'm scared of butterflies yeah <laughs> wow and people have the same reaction I <laughs> every every single person every single time and i'm like yeah do you know what at least i know my fun fact i don't have to like sit so you don't there have and to deviate yeah, like exactly. ever you do not every, have to do every time yeah exactly. it's like a script <laughs> that's hilarious what do you do for fun I feel like you have a lot going on. What do you like to do for fun? I really enjoy being with my friends. I think Mm -hmm. the summer has been like all about balance for me. And so it's like, you know, we'll like go to work like all day. And then after that, like we'll go out and relax. Um, I'm really trying to appreciate as many beach days as possible. Take it in, Um, girl. Taking it in yes. after all of that rain when i exactly. first came home i was like okay every so time you, i see we sun, have to blame for you for bringing all the rain no that ver- that definitely started far before i came home I'm um joking. so so yeah so um i i definitely enjoy you know being with my friends and enjoying time with them mm-hmm. as i said you know going for drives and everything mm-hmm. um but i also just appreciate downtime i i love silence I love Girl. just kind of like sitting in my own space mm-hmm. um and so you know like when it comes to that it's just really whatever kind of whatever kind of I need in the moment Mm -hmm. um whatever whatever Mackenzie wants in the moment is like kind of what I what I kind of go for um but yeah being with my friends is like what what really kind of keeps me going in terms of like you know having fun and being happy so yeah that's good so I guess obviously you're still in your journey right Mm -hmm. and the journey's still going on and you are have a plan and you're sticking to the plan obviously Mm -hmm. which is important um but with that plan what I guess with the plan, right? You mm-hmm. have things in place and, you know, different steps that you want to take. But when is Mackenzie successful? When are you kind of in that plan that you kind of created for your life mm-hmm. with all the deviations that will happen? Yep. Because, you know, life be life. Right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so with all of those deviations that we have, right, in life, what does success look like to Mackenzie? I think my ideal would would be for success to be a constant Mm. um so that i can appreciate at each moment um that i'm i'm working at my optimal state um so whether that be wherever i am employed Mm -hmm. um you know wherever i am you know geographically making sure that at each moment i feel as though i'm working at my best um i think is probably my personal point Mm. of success I think that in terms of my overall goal for success, mm-hmm. I would say as long as I'm making an, an impact and a good impact locally, then I feel as though I'm successful. And so whether that be, you know, as a lawyer and, you know, for whatever I, I choose to specialize in at that point, um, politically, mm-hmm. um, you know, giving back to the organizations that I'm a part of and that I volunteer with, I think that as long as I'm maintaining those good relationships and, and making sure that I'm supporting and empowering other people, mm-hmm. um, that's when I'm most successful. Okay. 
All right, Mackenzie. Well, girl, we are wrapping up on time. Um, and obviously, before anyone leaves the couch, we all I always ask, what do you want to be remembered for? So when you're no longer on this planet, which will be a long time from now, <laughs> um, and someone says, Mackenzie Cole Tuckett, um, what do you want them to say about you? I want them to say that she empowered others to be their most authentic selves. Well, thank you so much, Mackenzie. Thank you. Thank you so, for having me. Of course. I'm so excited that you had time. I was like keeping my fingers crossed. I was like, oh, I hope she's not going back to school. <laughs> yes. um, so I'm glad it all worked out. Yes. The stars Go, aligned. Gotta be here for Ten days. There you, oh, to be here there you for go. Cup Especially to wash our summer suit. <laughs> oh, exactly. 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 There you go. There you go. <laughs> all right. So if people want to continue to follow you and your journey and, you know, just kind of keep up to date with everything that's going on with you, what's the best way for them to do that? Um, I think... I think I'll probably start doing some vlogs, mm -hmm. you know, as I go for, you know, uh, overseas for Hong Kong. Mm -hmm. And so probably on Instagram. Okay. Mackenzie Cole. Mm -hmm. okay, just at Mackenzie just, Cole. Yeah, just at Mackenzie Cole. It will All be right. Yeah. yeah. Perfect. <laughs> All right. Well, guys, you heard it here first. Our future premiere. I'm claiming it. You got it here <laughs> July 30th, 2023. We're sitting down with Mackenzie Cole Tuckett. And we are so grateful for her spending some time with us today. Thank you again for joining Thank me. You. Like she said, if you want to follow her on Instagram and figure out her journey and just be a long for her journey as she continues to be this amazing woman that she is continuing to be make sure you follow her on instagram um as always thank you for joining me on hustle heart podcast podcast uh don't forget to subscribe to the channel on youtube make sure you head over to the website www.hustleheartpodcast.com make sure you sign up to be a vip listener we do some really cool giveaways on there and you also get access to all of our show notes as well as being able to get some of our episodes early Big shout out to our sponsors, Brown and Company, as well as 59 Front. And thanks again for watching Hustle Her Podcast. Hey guys, thanks so much for watching the episode with Mackenzie Cole Tuckett. I don't know if you noticed, but we had some books on display. These books were curated for Mackenzie's episode by the bookmark at Brown and Co. So we had Mary Prince, the history of Mary Prince. We also had Win Every Argument, the art of debating, persuading, and public speaking. We also had Lois, Bermuda's Grand Dame of Politics. All these books can be found at the bookmark at Brown & Company.